Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Now in Android, episode number 55. Today I'll be talking about Android Studio, the data store math skill series, updates on Glance, Automotive OS and Google Maps, and all of our usual segments including the recent Android X releases, articles, videos and updates from the ADV podcast. Android Studio Bumblebee is now stable and it has already received a patch release to address some launch issues, so make sure to upgrade. Some notable additions include a unified test execution between Android Studio and your continuous integration server, convenient pairing flows to support ADB over Wi-Fi, improved profiler tools to help you identify and analyze junk in your app, and new ways to preview animations and UI interactions without deploying your app to a device. The math skill series on Data Store continues on with more episodes. In the third episode, Simona covers Preferences Data Store, one of the two Data Store implementations. As Preferences Data Store uses key value pairs to store smaller datasets, it is the Jetpack solution that replaces shared preferences. In the fourth episode, Simona covers Proto Data Store, the other implementation. The difference is that Proto Data Store uses typed objects backed by protocol buffers to store smaller datasets while providing type safety. Simona also produced an episode about Data Store best practices, where you will learn about performing synchronous work and how to make Data Store work with Kotlin Data Class Realization and HIOP. This is Best Practices Part 1, so watch out for future episodes. Last year, we announced the Word Tiles API. To complement that Java API, we are excited to announce that support for Wear OS Tiles has been added to Glance, a new framework built on top of Jetpack Compose designed to make it easier to build for surfaces outside your Android app. Also, the Car App Library version 1.2 is already in beta, enabling app developers to start building their navigation, parking, and charging apps for Android Automotive OS. Now that we are talking about library updates, let's take a look at what's up with Android X releases. Navigation 2.4 is stable now. You can see how much this version introduces in the release notes. But to name a few, it was rewritten in Kotlin, it offers two-pane integration, navigation routes, Kotlin DSL improvements, and multiple backstack support. With this, the Health Navigation Compose library also reaches 1.0 stable. Sliding Pane Layout 1.2 is also stable, and it's now fault-aware. The automatic fault-aware behavior of sliding pane layout is possible due to the Android X window library that reached its first 1.0 stable milestone. The window library adds support for folding phones through the Window Info Tracker and Folding Feature APIs. The Camera X libraries version 1.1 reached beta, and from now on, all Camera X libraries will align on the same version number. The team also released a library that integrates Google Maps with Jetpack Compose. It contains composables for the Maps SDK for Android. You can read more in the project's readme. Ok, moving on to articles. Katerina Semenova wrote about improving app performance with baseline profiles, or how to improve startup time by up to 40%. Startup time is important and baseline profiles are a new mechanism to provide profiles and improve your user experience. If you are into media and want to know how OBO, Google's High Performance Audio Library, has improved the recording quality and completion rates of Smule, a karaoke app, take a look at this other article. If you enjoy reading how companies succeed using Google products, there are some stories about how Microsoft Lens increased developer productivity using Camera X, and Somato increased their app speed by 30%. This time we got a couple of notable documentation updates. The guide to background work was updated to help you choose which library is best for your use case, Work Manager or Caroline. 
It depends on whether or not the work is persistent, and if it needs to run immediately, it's long running or deferable. If you work on Android TV, you should be aware of the accessibility best practices that the team created. It provides recommendations for both native and non-native apps. Get to know why accessibility is important for your TV app, how to evaluate your apps when TalkBack is used, how to adopt system caption settings, and more. Talking about accessibility, next up in the accessibility series is TalkBack, the Google screen reader. In this video, learn what TalkBack is, how to set it up, how to navigate through your app with it, and how you can use it to improve the accessibility of your app. Lastly, a new episode of the Android Developer Backstage is out. In episode 182, large screens are a big deal, Clara, Florina, and Daniel join your usual hosts to talk about large screens, what they are and what they mean for app developers. You will also learn about the resources at your disposal to build high-quality experiences on large screen devices, from samples and guidance to canonical layouts and new APIs such as window size classes. Disclaimer, Florina is very excited about this. Don't miss the epic large screens, large screens, large screens intro. And that's it for this time. You can find all the links to the content I mentioned in the Now on in Android episode 55 blog post in Medium. To get notified about future episodes, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel. Bye!